really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard. Which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Seriously Speaking. I'm sure you're surprised to see me starting off the show. <laughs> so on today's episode, we're going to be talking about youth involvement in politics and national issues generally. So I will throw it back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know how awkward it was for Tabia to do this, but I had to have her open the show so we can get a feel of what we're doing here. Tabia walked the talk for a number of years, right? But we'll be talking about that. I felt she's young, she's interested in politics, she's very vocal, and she knows what's happening in Nigeria today. She's feeling it. So we'll be having these conversations with Tabia, yes. with me on set, but we're going to bring somebody who's also well. They say youth these days is up to 65, so I'm a youth. <laughs> So is this my guest? So I'll come back, but the truth is, it's a serious matter we're talking like we always say on Seriously Speaking. But if you don't go away, you'll get to see who is going to join us on set today very shortly. This is Seriously Speaking. Thank you, Tabia. Thank you, my pleasure. Yes, welcome back. This time I'm starting because I must introduce Tabia to you. Tabia, well, I knew her since she was in diapers. She doesn't like to hear that, but that's the truth. And um, that she's doing what she's doing today, something that her mother and I, Kendi Young Harry, my colleague in the past, used to wonder, where is she going to end up? With all the education she's had, we thought she's going to probably work in a bank. But this girl has faithfully waited to be in the political circle. In the course of doing that, she's been more or less like a social activist, running a column for years, first with Guardian, managing Guardian Woman and Guardian Life, right? And then running her column on Guardian. What's the title of your column again? Tip, Tip of a New, new dawn, dawn for a long time. And then even the TV show Walk the Talk also on this channel for all of these years. And she was dedicated Tabia Princewell. Why? <laughs> well, because, you know, for me, it's, it's very simple. You know, we complain about our country. We want things to be different, but we never get involved. We complain about leadership. We say things should be different, but then you sit down and allow the wrong sorts of people to take decisions on your behalf. You know, so at some point for me, that has to stop. You have to be able to take ownership of what happens to you, what happens to the society. And that's something I've always been passionate about. And so here I am. Take ownership, yeah. take ownership. Walk yeah. the talk of what you did. So you're walking the talk exactly. now because in the past few months, yes. you got a job with the Lagos State government. Yes. Was that a better job than getting a job with a bank? <laughs> well, it depends on what you qualify as better job. You okay, know, better maybe, paying. Be, maybe, but no, not better paying. Better paying definitely would be in um, the private sector. Mm -hmm. But then if, like I am, you're actually passionate about seeing things done differently and you have the opportunity to work with people who also share that mindset, then why not? Because at the end of the day, for me, not only, so A, money <laughs> isn't everything. B, the money will come eventually if you're dedicated and committed. You know, but you can't expect to start off Immediately, like, you know, people say, oh, I want to blow. I want to immediately be That's earning your X, X amount. Yes, my All generation. The blue. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's not possible. It's not sustainable anyway. So mm -hmm. why not be committed, start something that will be meaningful, and then know that eventually, you know, the... But there's a sacrifice. There's a price for that. Definitely, What's definitely. The price? Well, the price is, well, first of all, you know, um, when, you're, when you're a woman and a young woman and you say you want to do these things, people look at you a bit funny thinking, hmm, why, what is your agenda? Is it because, you know, let, let me, I can be honest with you, is it because some people would say you want to be meeting a certain category of people Big mixed men. with them, exactly, <laughs> you know, and there's that whole Nollywood stereotype as well of women who are either in the media or in politics, they're there because they want to do this or that. You know, it's rubbish. But at the end of the day, if you know what you stand for and what your goals in life are, you prove everyone wrong eventually. Mm -hmm. Is it easier for you, though, that you have a cushion? Well... Remember when I say yes cushion, your parents can still afford, afford to take care of you. Well, yes and no. You know, I would say no, first of all, because at the end of the day, you know, all parents are the same, no matter what your background is. After they've made such an investment in you, they expect yeah. that... You are, going to, the bill. <laughs> you are going to be able to fly and soar on your own, which, you know, by the grace of God, I'm able to, to do now. 
But um, it is true that, you know, as much as we tell people, you know, make a sacrifice, get involved, it's not as easily attainable for everyone as we would like. But then at the same time, I'll say to people, you know what? Sometimes in life, look, to make an omelette, you have to break a few eggs. So if you know that what you want is to be someone that people will say, people will look at and say, yes, this is... This has got substance. Exactly. Then why not just make that sacrifice for one, two, three, maybe three years and live the life that I need the people will look at and think... Are you think strange in your example. generation? Are you a group yes, of friends? Very, I'm very, very strange, I have to say. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a tightrope you're walking, but you're still walking that road. I, I'm trying to, you know, it's, um, it's difficult because, again, first of all, as a young woman, people will look at you and say... Why do you want to do this? You know, there's some men who might be intimidated by you. Mm -hmm. You know, some people who will say, oh, she must think too much of herself. She's in the media, she's on TV, she's into politics, blah, 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 blah. This isn't someone you can handle. But at the end of the day, I tell people, do you want to be with that kind of person who already has <laughs> low self-esteem? I think so little of themselves that they can't see themselves on the same level as you. No, mm -hmm. you're looking for someone who can help as much as you will elevate them, they can okay. also elevate you. So... Friends or partner, whoever who doesn't see it that way, I'm not interested. So you're, you'll be very interested in joining me to talk with my guests on the show today? Definitely. You know, I mean, you've heard about him, have you? Oh, of I don't want to even mention his name, but when I said he was going to join us on the show, because I've hounded him for, for a bit to, to come on this show, because he's quite very vocal on his column mm -hmm. in these day, you know, newspapers, when he has the time to write it. But when I said he was going to be on my show, somebody said, ah, that big man. So I will take a break and I'll surprise my viewers with who that big man is. Whatever the case, I senior him. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> so if you read these day newspapers, you must have read on occasion, Watchers of Time. It is written by Tonya Cole. I'm gonna have him come on set now. Tonya, please come on set. I wanted him to, I'm doing this to guys more these days on this show. Catwalk, catwalk. <laughs> this guy is the MD CEO of Sahara Energy. <laughs> well, yeah, sit down. Huh? Remind me, uh, you know, you know. You have to light in the mood. You have to, you have to, you have to. It's nice to have you here. Tabia. Yeah. So, is he going to say, oh, okay. Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think of doing anything else but what you're doing today? Like be an actor, for example. No, I. No, would no, the movies no, no. I work for yeah, you? That's for you now. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, why? With the catwalk you just did. No, it's for beautiful people. It's not for people like us. Yeah, honestly. Let me tell you the first thing they say about him. <laughs> that you know, because you're a silver spoon kid. Really? Yes. Are you serious? Yes. The son of Patrick Dele Cole. Okay, is that what makes you silver spoon? Yes. I didn't see it too. He... My father did not give us a verse, but he used cane to discipline us. So there's something to be said for that? Absolutely. So tell me, is it, what is it about your growing up that has made you so conscious of our environment to the extent that you decided to focus use mostly on youth development? Well, um, so first of all, growing up, uh, I was one of those children. I was very, very stubborn. Hmm. Yes, I was. So they came, they came me very well, seriously. I was. And... My aunt, I grew up, first of all, in, with a guardian, which in those days was something that you find very common, where your parents would send you, you grew up in an auntie's house and all of that. So I grew up in my mom's, uh, with my mom's sister and her husband, the Graham Douglases, so that's where I grew up. And I spent between the ages of seven and 16 with them. And so my formative years were actually made outside of my father's home. So when they say you had a silver spoon, it's quite, a, <laughs> it's a bit different. No, but you know, but Graham Douglas is also a big it's name. Okay. So you know how we're in Nigeria, when hey, we hear right. big names, right? It's we okay. assume, we assume that they're yeah. yeah, And it's good to assume, but assumption would always lead you the wrong way. So sometimes you want to hear the story. But that's not the story for today. That's a story for another day. So that's but, a rain check. Yes, it's a rain check. But having said that, we also grew up in a home where we had to compete because there were, when I said we grew up in this home, mm -hmm. it was not a home of one-on-one, -on -one, you know, where it's just one, two children, like today, you know, you have only three children or two children, mm -hmm. you spend time with them. We were like plenty, mm. eh, plenty in the house. So we had to fight for everything. You fight for food, fight for bed Best space, to come. Oh, wow. and all the <laughs> kind of things, you know. Uh, how to get to school, so I used to walk to school, come back and all. So we had all of these things, which kind of formed an independence in me very, very early. An independence knowing that nothing is going to come to you easy. It was made known to me from day one that 
inheritance, forget. There's nothing like that. You're not going to see anything of the sort. So I wasn't waiting for her uh, that my father or my uncle is going to leave something for you. Were this assumed or this actually made you mm, understand that? Not just was it seen. Mm -hmm. It was acted out. They'll be telling but, you mm, It was this acted thing. everything. Forget it. Just all I owe you, education, will give you good education. And I'm glad. I went to King's College, I went to Corona, I went to University of Lagos, so I had good education. I came out the day I left university. As I was leaving university, I was saying thank you very much, bye-bye, no more school, it's time to work. And I left home. Soon after university, I left home and I started living on my own. So we've, you've, had a, you've had an upbringing Right, way from when you were young, that was telling you that, look, don't expect anything. You go out and make sure that you get What's different your... now? That's made you want to... A lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Okay. What's a different? Lot. Well, I don't... You see, what I found interesting about what you just said was um, when you made it clear that people in your... People around you, the adults around you, told you that you had to work and you had to work hard. So whether or not you believe you are the son of this person, that person, mm -hmm. you chart your own path in life. That's very different so today. So it's, it's missing. It's missing. That's the missing it's gap. It's missing. That's very, there's literally little to none. So who are we blaming? That. The parents or who? And how, when you, I don't, I don't through know. your work, the marriage initiative and trying to develop the youth, who's... What, there, there, there are lots of influences that are coming out today. Remember, way back then, um, Nobody will spare the rod. Not just your uncle, auntie, your neighbor. Well, every psychologists single say person. rod is not good. No, I, hang on. I didn't. I don't know. But I'm telling you, I said way back then, no, mm -hmm. nobody will spare it. It worked. Okay. Now, were there excesses and all of that? Absolutely. I mean, there was a day I was skinned with fan belts. I can't remember that. Was, you know, <laughs> that was the closest thing. I'm that, sure. You know, that was, that was the closest for me. Thing, that was beyond belief. Because if they kill you with a kidney, we break. But the day they brought fan belt, it was once and never again. I carry after anyway. Let me, let's, leave, <laughs> let's leave that story. <laughs> but the point is, yes, there are excesses, mm -hmm. and I agree with that. But there's also a corrective attitude that must be done. And if you are in a basis of raising children today where there's no discipline, they get away with everything, you're afraid of speaking to them because they will speak back and all of that, and you cannot discipline children as a result of that, then I think what you would see at the end of the day is that society will bring uh, out what, the, what, what it brings. So I believe that there is a different... Now, the society today teaches a different type of upbringing. Who makes up a society? But is it, it's people like me. I mean, we're already in yeah, our 50s, yeah. 60s. Where do we I just go? Wanted to ask, is, it, is, it even, is it really discipline? Because something I've noticed is people of, that have your profile, you know, who are very successful in their careers and all that, what I noticed is they, very, they rarely have time for their children. That, so it's not true. even necessarily discipline. It's the fact that they're not even aware sometimes that their children are doing whatever it is that they're doing, you know. People don't have conversations with their children about the facts of life, that one day you will leave this little yeah, bubble, mm -hmm. you'll be out there. How so are you, are you raising to... your kids? Because the truth is, you've been very <laughs> successful. Sahara Energy is successful. No question about that. You are not a poor man. Eh. Yes. <laughs> You're not a poor man. Depends so on who you're you comparing raising... me to. So... No, well, yeah. comparing you to 95, 99% of Nigerians. Nigeria. Yeah, Come really. on. Yeah. When so you're one of the 1%. You have, have Bill Gates, you have... Nigeria. Nigeria. Oh, okay. okay, so how are you raising your kids? <laughs> are they having... Because what they use is entitlement. entitlement. Isn't that what's happening? Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, so there are two ways. So first of all, I think I received enough caning for all my children. <laughs> uh, so, so you don't cane them? No, I, don't. I don't. But what I do, essentially, is that I engage them. I've so, seen you with them. So, I, can, I can testify. Yeah, so we have to engage. You have to speak. You have to understand. You have to really get into their head and understand. And you also have the benefit. I have the benefit of having seen through, which is what adults really do. They've seen it. They know what the intended uh, outcome would be of a particular path that somebody is going. Yeah. Okay, so now what you want to do is really kind of paint that picture and say, you know what, this is where you're going, but there are choices and consequences. And that's something that happened to me. I had to learn choices early, starting from age 11. First of all, which secondary school are you going to go to? Can you imagine my father asking me that? I passed the Bobby and King's College, and I had to make the choice myself. At 11, which school to go to? How do you even begin? 
Where do you want to start with that kind of thing? But I had to make that choice. That I had to taught go. you to be independent. So it started teaching me very early that choices matter. The consequence of every choice you make matter. Now, who bears the consequence of the choice? It's you. So, for example, I tell my daughter, uh, as she was getting older, I started talking to them, first of all, very early. Your first is a girl? No. My first is a boy and then two girls. And I started speaking to my daughter very, very early. All of them, I sat down and I started talking about sex and the consequence of sex mm -hmm. and what would happen. If you, you did get... cringe. Eh, just... <laughs> I'm cringing just thinking about it. Well, it's true. <laughs> so I said to them, for example, that, look, you can go out. Nobody can, I mean, I'm not going to be fooling you everywhere, everywhere and absolutely. all of that. Absolutely, It's true. Absolutely. Now, you can go out, but these are the consequences. So this is what happens and all of that. Now, you may get pregnant and come back. Now, if you get pregnant and come what back, what will happen first of all? Am I going to kick you out of the house? Absolutely not. I won't. I see my daughter. You will come back. We will carry it. We will manage the baby. We will sit down. Well, you will be out of school for a while. These are the consequences. Mm -hmm. And who will bear the consequences? Not me. It's, it's you. you. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's you. You have a choice. So we started teaching them about consequences early, that every choice is your choice. Mm -hmm. But think about Absolutely. it. Play in your mind that this is how this would go, this is how this would go. Wait, and then decide that can you bear the consequence so of your action. Question. Now, if you decide you can bear it, please. By and I won't carry it for you. I, no, no, I'm not carrying it. I must thank you for coming. Thank you thank for being you. on the show. We'll do this again soon. Definitely. <laughs> and you will continue to be a guest host. <laughs> Definitely. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> thank myself. you, Toye. This thank you awesome. very much. Thank, thank you, my you. big man. Ah. Thank you, my little. <laughs> I will see you again on Seriously Speaking. Bye for thank now. Thank you.